Three and one. So far, at the very least. So what we're finding here is a lot of the games are very, very long. <laughs> and I think I've been in two top deck wars so far. So my whole opinion about early game aggression <laughs> and I was going to win in the early game, wrong. Stupid. Completely wrong. Wish it was, but it isn't. Psycho Dad the Mage. None of this is good. This is all going back. Did I hair greetings last guy? I don't think I hair greetings him. Fairy Dragon. Always really glad to have that in an early drop. <laughs> hair <laughs> greetings. Alright. So I'm always really Hello? interested in having that in just as an early drop against a mage. For the billionth time, it can avoid the fire blast. Yay! Okay, so I can fairy dragon heal trade with it. Or... No, he'll probably ping it and then run it in. What I was considering is playing the Argent Squire and allowing him next turn to... Well, not allowing him next turn. Whatever he does next turn, as long as it's not kill the Argent Squire, is fine. Or remove its shield. Then I Cruel Taskmaster, remove its shield, and I go up. That would be amazing value. Awesome plays. Terrific. But he's very unlikely not to remove its shield with the Fire Blast or with the River Colco disc and then kill it with the other one. So, it's going to be the Fairy Dragon. I'm going to feel real dumb if he plays a uh, Arcane Missiles, hits the Fairy Dragon twice, which is a 50-50% chance. Yep, okay, so he didn't have a really good turn two, so I'm absolutely certain he would have done that trade with the Arcane Squire, so he's good. The Fairy Dragon play was good. It's a valid play. Flesh-eating ghoul. You know, I have the Argent Squire and heal. Heal, armor up. Or I have the Flesh in Ghoul. I'm thinking the Flesh in Ghoul is probably much more likely to get removed. It's going to be Argent Squire, armor up. And when I play the Flesh in Ghoul, it's going to be because I am certain that a lot of things are going to be dying that turn. And he's going to have to see it as a big threat. I do have a really good option of the Stormwind Knight next turn. Awesome. This is good. Uh, mirror Entity is what I'm looking out for here. So, I'm going to do the same thing that I said that I was going to do last time. Not a Mirror Entity. Great value. Except for the fact that he played out a secret. So what can I do now? It's not Mirror Entity, so it's something that triggers on attack. It can be Vaporize, it can be Ice Barrier, or it can be the Immune One. I should really learn the name of the Immune One if I'm going to continue calling it that. Nice barrier. Vaporize. Okay. For the king! The land protects for honor. Okay. Yep. There's no real other response than that. I am okay with him having done that. Because vaporize killing a 2-2. It's fine. Although I don't really have many huge minions in this deck, so. So, the fact that he's got Frost Nova is telling me that there's a possibility, a very likely possibility, that he's looking for a later game here. So, I would have otherwise played the Argent Golem. The Arcane Golem, sorry. But I don't think I will. I think I'm actually going to use the Mortar Strike. Just because it does have a Snowball ability that I don't want to be dealing with. Anyhow... The reason that Frozen Nova, Frozen Nova, Frost Nova, tells me that he does have late game is because he's looking for delay. That, with Vaporize, means he's looking for board control without having to put things on the board. He's looking for playing spells in the late game. Or he's just... gonna put things on the board anyway. You make me look like a dumb man. Flesh Eating Ghoul is going to go outside of the Defender of Argus, so that when he makes that trade, I still get the value out of it. Seven! Oh my god! Flame Strike! I forgot again! 
Oh no! Flame strike, flame strike, flame strike, flame strike. Frost bolt. Oh, I feel good. I feel happy. Anyhow, the fact that he had Frostbolt and Cold to Cold really plays into my strategy. Strategy really plays into the idea of him looking for the later game. So I can silence one of my minions and run it in to do damage. It may be the best use of silence I have. Try this. So the fact that he didn't play Flame Strike le uh, last turn, it was the best Flame Strike opportunity he was going to get this game, means he doesn't have it, or he hasn't drawn it yet. And I am fine with taking a 1 in 19 chance that he draws out the next Flame Strike. So obviously my Iron B Guile is going into going there. That's a shame, but it's only a Battle Axe. There's so... There's so many worse things he could have hit with that, like my fiery war axe. No. This could be a mirror entity, or it could be the one that triggers on, uh, on almost death. So I'm gonna fiery war axe here. And you know what? I'm not gonna play anything on the board. Normally I'd be fine, I mean, like, he's got two cards in hand. It's really unlikely he's not going to be able to afford them, so giving him a Mono Crystal isn't exactly a really big thing. So normally I would have played it, but if that is, yeah, if that were, rather, a Mirror Entity, I give him a bit of value that he doesn't need to have. Now I have two, and I have little damage on the field. Don't be Mirror Entity, don't be Mirror Entity. Not Mirror Entity, bonus. Shit, it's Mirror Entity. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm gonna hit that with my face. But at the very least, that means I get to play my Strangle Thorn Tiger, and it's still safe. So now he's top decking, basically. Uh, which is a delicious chocolate. He's taking white chocolate and putting it in little, like, square chunks on top of dark chocolate. And that's just beautiful. I don't think he knows you can't target minions in stealth. So that's well played. well played. I was gonna theory craft a little bit about what that card could have been, but honestly, at this point, he lost, so why? Four wins. Here we are. We started from the bottom, now we're here. I win one more time, I achieve my prediction, everyone's happy. Except for all the people who lost. Those people probably aren't. Dr. Bojangles, or whatever his name was, the guy that I just first. And Magic L. Magic L. Remember him? Oh, he was a blast. Was Magic L the one that beat me? Magic L the Shaman. Yeah, he was. Fuck Magic L, man. I didn't beat that guy. Twat? Okay. On a much brighter note, Captain Waffles is a warrior, and we're going to be playing a video game. Argent Squire, throw everything else back. I don't need four damage that early in the game from the hero ability, and I am using my silences as a reactive thing, so I definitely don't need that either. This is alright. I'm fine with this. Two Argent Squires on turn one. Mm, yeah. Love it. Don't play anything. Tell me, buddy. You know you don't want to. Greetings. So, whenever you play a lot of things, you want to think, what am I overextending against? He could cleave in a few turns, I believe. Um, which is two damage to two random enemy minions. But that would only remove the... Oh, awesome! So I get that for free, and I still have two 1-1s on the board. Or... I get that for absolutely free. I could even consider slamming one of my own creatures so I get out a better draw, because I'm not going to play the Arcane Golem next turn. I don't want to give him that fast of a ramp. I wonder. That's going to almost certainly remove one of the Divine Shields next minion he plays. So. Or he could Whirlwind. He might have a Whirlwind and he's setting up for that, in which case he removes the board. I've 
fight. I fight. Reasonable risk to be taking. Do you have a whirlwind? Show me the whirlwind. Or even cleave. Honestly, if he uses cleave to fight these two. Morning, okay. This is good. I can deal with this. I slam that. It's a 1-2. I trade that in. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's really all I have to say about that. Or do I force him to make the trades? Or do I force him to make the trades? That's my question. Because if he doesn't trade, I can defend Revargus and I keep them both alive. But, what is it possible that he can do? Can he save that? He might have a bit of a heal card. A uh, master plus heal is a really good thing to be able to do. He might be able to Shattered Sun Cleric it and get some free trades. I fight. I fight. I don't like any of those possibilities. I think they're too threatening. And far too likely that I could think of enough possibilities that it was definitely the correct play. Ouch. Ah, no. Okay. Armor up, end turn. I need the Arcanate Reaper out next turn so that I can bop that Yeti in the face. And then I can start to worry about dealing whatever he plays with. Whatever he plays with. Whatever he plays. I really didn't want to have to do that. But Mortal Strike wasn't going to kill it. Defender of Argus was just going to die instantly. Had to. Really didn't have an option. Alright. Alright. So, commentary's been lacking for a bit. Uh, I am thinking it's taking time. You can understand with the hamsters and the wheels that exist inside my brain. That's awesome. I can remove that. That's not. I can't. Um, yes, I can. Actually. Abomination. I can. So Abomination is going to serve as my sweep in this game. The only annoying thing about Abomination here is he trades those two in, that gets damaged, it becomes a 5-2. And now I have to deal with the 5-2. 5-2, 5-1. Because it'll be dealt 2 damage. Oh my god, where did my health go? <laughs> okay, so Desperation plays time. What right, what can we do? Got 7 mana next turn. Arcane Golem, Defender of Argus. Whoa, bad. Not good. Definitely bad. That was a misplay on his part. That had five health. He could have attacked with the other two. He was going to lose them anyway. And then he would have had a 4-1 to attack in as well. So I definitely need to clear that out. Oh, I could have... We must cleanse That's a shame. I could have just cruel taskmastered it out of existence. Don't have any direct damage. <laughs> I'm relying on a warrior not to have direct damage, so as you can tell, I'm in a really good position. Warrior not having direct damage? Perfect. Sounds good. Lost the game. Well played. <laughs> oh well. All we can do now is learn from our mistakes. So what mistakes did we make? Well, we let him get a really big board early. While holding on to cards that could have let him, uh, could have let him, could have removed that. We took a lot of damage to the face to remove cards that he did. He did, that he played, because of it. Although I did make the correct trade yeah. with that Imp Master. Because he did have the raid leader on. 
So it's possible I want to keep the Raging Worg in here. And the only reason that I would want to keep that is because I may end up with my combo. The Cruel Taskmaster Dream. But on top of that, I might not get any early cards. I trust in the strength of the early cards in this deck. I think that's completely reasonable fuck. Shit. I trust in the top decking abilities that I have. I have a belief, a sincere belief, in the heart of the cards. God fuck, damn. Balls. I really don't want to play the Shattered Sun Cleric to buff nothing, but if I have to, I'm going to play the Shattered Sun Cleric to buff nothing. He does have the option of pinging his own thing, so enraged creatures are really good for Amani Berserker. For Amani Berserker, for Mage. I could make it a 7-2 if I wanted. That'd be a great move, wouldn't it? I do not have the option of dealing one damage to a minion, so I couldn't just play the Cruel Taskmaster. Oh no! I don't like anything about that. So I probably want to execute that card and then just play an Argent Squire. The light protects and because that's probably what I want to do, it's probably what I'm going to do. Thank you. This means when he fire blasts here and runs this in so that he's got a 3-1 left on the board and then plays whatever he wants, I'm going to be able to just Cruel Taskmaster it to win. Very similar to how I just did. Problems we're facing. What are the problems we're facing? He has six cards, I have two on the field. One of them's used half of its usefulness to me. Now he has seven cards. Okay. So the speed of my game is something that I'm thinking about right here. The speed of my game. We must Shattered Sun Cleric well. over here. No and the reason that that is me thinking about the speed of my game is because when I play a, a weapon, I can use it that turn. Shattered Sun Cleric is going to wait a turn to start They'll actually giving me any value in terms of its own damage. Oh. This is an interesting thing. Oh, also, the reason the Shattered Sun Cleric buffed this guy is so that he's immune from Fire Blast, if he tends to come out of it. So, I can Arcanite Reaper, hit that. What now? I could Leper Gnome if I wanted. Because he's enough turns away from Fire Blast. Uh, Fire Strike? Fire... <sighs> Flame Strike. Flame Strike, Ryan. What is cool. And I do have damage. Damage cards. Damage card central. Okay, so that's probably causing screen flicker in the rendering. Let's do that a little slower. I do have damage card central. So I'm going to hit, and then I'm going to hit him in the face. A lot. Whoa! No, I'm not. I'm going to play the South Sea Deckhand first. Because he wasn't going to have charge because my weapon was about to die. Give me a big hug. That's the worst impression of any- I'm sorry. I- I should delete that. I should just start over. Or- Hello. You know, find a Starbucks film or something. Back to work. Push forward. The biggest overextension of all time! Does he have the flame strike? If he does, it happens now. But- Brilliant. He deals two damage to himself. Mortal Strike deals four. I win. Oh, Arcane Golem deals 4. So that's a thing that could deal 4, but instead I'm going to kill you with that. Okay. Wow. So I should have I should have mentioned the thing about the Leather Gnome, uh, and that I knew I had lethal if he did that, before doing that. So we're getting very close to my prediction, in that I have 5 wins and 2 losses.
I'm possibly going to lose here. Don't cry, Argentina. It's possible. It's definitely possible. I do feel a bit more uh, attuned with the deck at the moment. I feel like I have a bit of a bit of a better sense of what's going on with it. And it could be very good against a rogue because a rogue, a lot of things that a rogue does is hit things with her face. And Lepino? Yeah. Yeah, Lepino. Because I'm going first. So a lot of things that a rogue does is hit things with her face. And you know what? That takes health. She's using her health as a resource to remove things from the field. She mulligans three cards there. So she's got one card here, which is probably good early play. Got that. Oh no, she can coin into the thing. Okay, so I'm basically just drawing out a coin so that I can deal four damage to her. Okay. Never mind. Fuck me, I guess, you know. Apparently, you know, just... <sighs> okay, so what are you going to coin into? Probably a two drop, three two, if I had to guess. No, don't like it. And there's nothing I can do. It's entirely possible I have to wait until the Abomination to actually start dealing with the things that she has on the board at this point. But the really good thing is the Abomination's value isn't in its existence. The Abomination's value is in its death. Arcane Golem was killed by both of them. Shields up. So, because his value is in his death, I don't have to be scared of things like assassinate. Because if he assassinates it, I still get value. The only problem is this is going to survive, this is going to survive, and this is going to spread. Basically. Like the plague. Fiery Win Axe. Okay, so, silence that. Shields up. Now, Abomination next turn. Hope he kills it. Fiery Winax can finish off these two guys that are actually giving me trouble. He's probably, yeah, pop that in face. So, one really good thing about playing the Iron Beak Owl in that situation is that not only do I deal two damage to him and I get to stop this Death Rattle from occurring, but I also get to stop him from playing a minion on the board, which could have been a minion that would have survived the Abomination. So, what has he got now? He could play a Yeti. That would be pretty piss. Pretty piss. Pretty annoying, I believe is the word I'm looking for. But it would be... Well played. So, we're about to lose our third game. <laughs> My board control was too weak. Two damage if it survives, draw a card. What can I do? Where do we go now? Sweet child. Is there anything I can play that will win me this game? Will win me this game? No, fuck winning. Is there anything I can play which will stop me from actively already losing this game? I don't lose yet. <laughs> I, if he can deal zero damage to me this turn other than what he already has on the board, I will have one health. At which point, uh, I suppose I'll flesh eating ghoul into charge. To face. To attack. Well Timber time bested me. So, I'd usually pre be pretty salty about that. That's really not the optimal results. I probably don't hit sustainability as only getting five wins. I would usually be pretty salty about that. How the fuck ever? I predicted at the beginning that we were going to hit five wins, and we hit five wins. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I was correct. And ultimately, isn't that just what matters? Let's open our chest. Deafening silence as I ask if that matters. Three. That's three. It's the, yeah. 
definitely not sustainable at 60. However, through completing those two things, I still have enough gold to go again. And I would have to go horribly to not get enough. In fact, I'm not sure if even with zero loss, uh, zero wins, uh, you get zero gold. So I'll probably have another one after that. Let's open the pack. Can we end it on a good note? Can we find a legendary? Common. Common. Rare. Common. Common. Unleash the Hounds. Really good. I don't have enough Unleash the Hounds for my Hunter deck. This is good. Even though I don't like playing Constructed, I'm really, really glad to have it. And I have enough fights. So. That's unfortunate. However, you know, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and don't do what Donnie Warrior don't does.